Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can create a searchable drop-down list in Microsoft Excel. I'll show you how you can do it on both the web and on desktop. And as a spoiler alert, it's a lot easier on the web. With a traditional drop-down list, you have to click into it and then you have to browse through to find the value that you're looking for. With a searchable drop-down list, on the other hand, you simply type in a few letters of what you're looking for and then you'll see all possible matches. This way, you can focus on high value activities. For example, baking cookies. If you wanna follow along, I've included a spreadsheet in the description. All right, let's check this out. Here I am in Excel and we're going to start on the web because this is only going to take about a minute. Like I said, it's a lot easier on the web. Hopefully we see this same functionality come to desktop soon. Usually Microsoft rolls out features on the web first and then they follow with desktop. You can easily access Excel on the web by going to office.com and it's completely free to use it. I want to create an order form for cookies and our sales team misspells cookie names all the time. I keep telling them there's a big difference between double chocolate chip and triple chocolate chip. To insert a drop-down list, simply click on the cell where you want the drop-down list to be. Next, up on the top tabs, go over to the option that says Data. Click on that, and then all the way over on the right-hand side, click on Data Validation. Within Data Validation Settings, you can specify what values you want to allow, and currently it's set to any value, but I want this to be a drop-down list. Right here, I'll select List. Next, I need to specify what the source is for my drop-down list. Here, I'll move the dialog over, and here I see all the different cookie types that we offer. This is the source for my drop-down list. Here, I'll select all of these different items and then click on OK. Over on the left-hand side, I now have a drop-down list. And here, when I click on it, I can see all of the different options. Now, let's say I start typing, let's say maybe I'm looking for oatmeal cookies. Here, I'll type in oat, and look at that, it's a searchable drop-down list. Here I see the two different cookie types that have oat in it. We have our oatmeal butterscotch toffee, and then we also have the oatmeal raisin. Both excellent choices. As you can see, it is extremely easy on the web. On desktop though, it's a different story. We're gonna have to use a few different functions, but don't worry, I'll show you how you can pull it off step-by-step. Step. Let's jump over to desktop. Here I am in Excel desktop, and to set up a searchable drop-down list, we're going to use a few functions that require a Microsoft 365 subscription. First, we're going to create a basic drop-down list. Select the cell where you wanna place your drop-down list, and up on the top tabs, let's click on the one called Data. Over here, right near the middle, there's an option called Data Validation. Click on this. This opens up the data validation prompt, and this is pretty similar to what we saw on the web. Right in here, the cell is currently set to allow any value, but we want this to be a drop-down list with all of our different cookie types. Here, I'll select this and then select list. For the source, once again, I'll select all of the different cookie types that we offer here at the Kevin Cookie Company. Next, I'll click on OK. And check that out, I now have a drop-down list over on the left-hand side, and I can see all of the different cookie types that we offer here. Now, let's say I just wanna see our oatmeal cookies. Here, I'll type in oat, and then let me click on this drop. Oh, look at that, there is a nasty error message. Unfortunately, on desktop, you can't search for values like you can on the web. Instead, we're gonna have to build out some functions that allow us to do this. Before we build out our searchable drop-down list, let's go back to this cell and remove the data validation. Here, I'll click on data validation again and I'll set it to allow any value. Next, click on OK. To build this out, we're going to use three separate functions and you can see them right here. We're going to use search, is number, and filter. And we'll walk through how each one of these works and then we'll pull it all together. And to make this example really clear, we're going to search for oat, basically our lineup of oatmeal cookies. Now, some people think that these are the healthiest cookies that we offer here at the Kevin Cookie Company, and we sell a lot of them, 
or at least people think they're healthy, they still have a ton of butter and sugar. To get started, we are going to use the search function. We want to search for oat in all of our different cookie types. Here I'll click into this cell, and by far the easiest way to enter a function in Microsoft Excel is to click on the insert function icon. This will open up a really nice helper that'll help us craft our function. Here I'll type in search and then click on go. Next, click on the top match item, then click on OK. This opens up a prompt where I could define the text that I want to search for. I want to search for oat, so here I'll click on oat right over here. Next, there's another prompt that asks me where I want to search for this text, and I want to search for oat in all of our different cookie type names. So here I'll simply select all of our different cookie types. Lastly, it also asks me for a start number, basically the position where I want to start looking, and I want to look from the beginning, so I'm just going to leave this blank, and anyway, this is an optional argument. I'm all done now filling this out, so I'll click on OK. Now that I entered this function in, I get a number back where it finds oat, and here I get a 1 back because it found oat in the first position of this cookie type name. All the other ones show me an error because there is no oat in the name. Now that I've used the search function to find oat in all of our different cookie names, now I want to get a list back of just those items that have oat in them. So over here I'll type in the filter function. This will basically allow us to filter the list down to the options with oat. Once again, let's click on the function helper right up here. Within insert function, let's type in filter, then click on go, and click on the best match. This opens up the function arguments for filter. And first it asks me for the array, or basically all the different items that I want to filter. Here I'll select all the different cookie types that we offer here. And next it asks me which cookie types do I want to include. If I look down here at this helpful hint, it tells me that it needs an array of booleans where true represents a row or column to retain. Now if I look over here at the search results, these are not currently boolean values. So before I can use the filter function, I need to use one other function to find out if oat is in fact in these different items. Basically I need to get true or false, does it contain oat or does it not contain oat. Let's close out of this prompt right over here, and if you notice this, you probably saw that there was one more function. We're going to use isNumber to find out true or false whether it contains oat. Here once again, let's click into this cell and then go up to the insert function. Within the prompt, let's type in isNumber, then click on go and select the best match. This opens up the function arguments, and this function is really simple. All I need to do is provide one value and it'll tell me true or false. Does it contain a number? Over here, I'll click in this cell, and it obviously doesn't contain a number, so I'll click on OK, and here it tells me false. I'll copy this formula all the way down, and here we can see that only the oatmeal cookie options are true. These are the only two with oat in them. We're now ready to use the filter function. I'll go back up to this cell, and once again, let's go to insert function. Here, let's type in filter and then click on the best match. Within the function arguments, let's select the array and that's all of the different cookie types that we offer here. Next, it wants to know what values we want to include, and now we've gone through and we've defined whether or not it contains a number. If it contains a number, well, this is one of the options that we want in our drop down list. Here I'll highlight this entire column. Lastly, I can also specify what happens if no results come back. Here I'll insert quotes and I'll simply type in no results and then I'll close the quotes. This all looks good now so I'll click on OK. And check that out, the filter function returns the two oatmeal cookies that we're looking for. So we're ready to bring these results now into our drop down list. Let's go back to the cell where we want to insert a drop down list. I'll select this cell right here. Let's go up to the top tabs, click into data, and then go over to data validation. Within data validation, just like we did before, let's set it to allow a list. Here I'll select list, and for the source of the list, instead of highlighting all of the different cookie types, we're going to select the filter list right here. Let's select that value. 
At the end of the source, we have to add one additional item. We're going to insert a hash. And the reason why is this list can contain multiple items. And if you want to get multiple items back in the drop-down list, well, we have to use a hash. That'll include all of the spill values. There's one more change that we need to make before clicking on OK. Let's also go over to the error alert and turn this off. And the reason why is let's say you were to just type in oat. That doesn't match any of the cookie types, so you would get an error. But we want people to be able to type in partial matches and then they'll see all the possible options. So let's turn this off and now we're all done, so click on OK. And check that out. I now have a drop down list right here and it has oat in it. When I click on the drop down list, I see the two cookie options with oat. So here's an example. Let's type in birth for the birthday cake cookie. When I click on the drop down, I see the one option with birthday cake. Or let's say cookies with butter. We have lots of cookies with butter. In fact, all of our cookies have butter, but some of the names just don't let people know. And here we can see all of the different options. So this is a pretty nice searchable drop down list. At this point, if you just need one row with a drop down list, you can take all of this area over here, you can move it to a separate sheet, or you could hide these columns, and no one will ever know that you have all of this logic behind the scenes to make your drop down list work. If you want multiple rows to be able to work, unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit more work. Here, for example, if I click on the cell with butter and I drag this down, well, look at that. I still have my drop down list and it looks like it works, but does it? Here I'll type in whoopee. We have a whoopee cookie and let's click on the drop down list. Here it looks like it's still returning all the butter values. And the reason why is here, if I come over to this column right here, you'll notice that it's pointing at this specific cell. So it doesn't update for the cell below. So how do we get it to work with multiple rows? I want searchable dropdown lists for this entire order form. Well, to do that, let's jump to the next worksheet called order form multiple. Here I am on the next sheet. And once again, I want to find all cookie types with oat. And don't worry, we're simply going to use everything that we just learned to return a dropdown list on multiple rows. And we're going to start with the same function that we started with on this previous sheet. Here I'm going to enter search. And once again, I want to search for oat in all of our different cookie types. This time, instead of putting all of the cookie types on this sheet, I've placed it on a separate sheet. So first off, I'm looking for oat, and then I need to specify where I want to search for it. So I'll insert a comma, and then I'll select my other sheet, and here I'll select all of the cookie types. So once again, I'm searching for oat in this list. This all looks good, so I'm going to close the parentheses and then hit enter. Just like we did before, here I see a list of all of the different cookie types that include oat, and just two of them include oat. So once again, just like we did before. Here I'm going to select the top cell, and now I want to know, is there a number in this list? So just like we did before. Here I'm going to type is number as another function, and then I'll open the parentheses and close the parentheses. So basically the output of the search, we're going to look at that to see if there's a number in that list. Then let's press enter. Down below, I can now see Booleans telling me true or false whether one of those cookie types includes oat. And here I see that two of them are true. Two of them contain oat. So once again, we're doing exactly what we did on the previous sheet, but now we're combining everything into one formula. Getting true or false back on its own isn't really that helpful. So once again, we want to filter our list of cookie types. So right here after equals, I'll type in filter. Then I'll open the parentheses and it asks me for the array or basically the cookie types that we want to pass back or the cookies that include oat. So here I'll click on the cookie type sheet. And once again, I'll select all of the different cookie types. Next, I need to specify which values I want to include. And on the previous sheet, we have a column with true or false. And that's this formula that we already entered in. So here I'll simply insert a comma and this will tell filter what values or what cookies to include. Here at the very end, I want to specify what it should say if there are no cookie types that match. And just like we did before, here I'll type in no results and then close my quotes. 
Next, I'll close the parentheses and then hit enter. And here now you see that two options come back. So just like we did before, the only difference now is we've combined all of these different functions together into just one formula. For this drop down to work on every single row, I need these results here to appear horizontally instead of vertically. And luckily there's a function that will help us with that. Here I'll click in the top cell and right after the equal sign, I'll type in transpose. This will take a vertical list and it'll turn it so it's a horizontal list. Here I'll open the parentheses at the beginning. I need to pass in an array. That's basically this list right here. At the very end, I'll close the parentheses and then hit enter. So here now you see I have a horizontal list of all of the different options that match OAT. Now that our formula is ready to go, let's insert a drop down list. Here I'll click into the cell where I want to add a drop down list. Next, let's go up and click on data validation. Within data validation, let's click on allow and then select list. For the source, we'll simply click right here. And once again, let's include a hash. That way that'll include all values that match and it could spread across multiple cells or what's referred to as the spill. When I copy down my drop down list, I don't want it to be locked to just one individual row. So right here, there's a dollar sign in front of the six. I'm going to remove that. So when I copy the data validation down, it'll apply to the lower rows. Up on top, let's also click on error alert and make sure that this checkbox is unchecked, just like we did before. We're all set now, so let's click on OK. And check that out. Here I have my drop down list, and when I click on it, I see the two oatmeal cookies. Now, here I can now pull the data validation down. So, here I'll pull it down a few rows, and over here I have to do the exact same thing. So, I'll also pull this down a few rows. Now, let's say I'm looking for all of our cookies with butter. Here I'll type in butter, I'll click on the drop down list, and here I see all of the different cookies with butter. Pretty neat, huh? To make this really elegant, you probably don't want all of the different options over on the side. Here I'll zoom out a little bit and we can just select a whole bunch of these columns and I'll hide them. Now when I zoom in, I have all of these nice drop down lists and no one will have any idea that we have all this logic right over on the side. Before we wrap up, let's jump over to the cookie types worksheet. I have all of the different cookie types in a table here. And to insert a table, simply go up to insert. And right here, you have the option to insert a table. If you don't have a table yet, you could also press control T. The nice thing about using a table is if I add any additional items down here, it'll automatically be included in my drop down list. With a table as well, you can simply sort your table here and that'll automatically apply the sorting in your drop down list. You could also use a function to sort, but this is just a little bit easier. Simply sort it here. All right, well, let me know down below in the comments, would you personally order cookies from the Kevin Cookie Company? To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.